Welcome to the Ohio Medical Corporations in servicing video on push to set vacuum regulators. Today you'll learn three ways to help ensure proper suctioning technique, including the proper setup, identify properly functioning regulators, and the correct way to operate and set Ohio Medical Corporation's push to set vacuum regulators. Before we begin, it is important to understand that if proper technique is not followed, the clinician will inadvertently set regulators at higher than recommended suction pressure that could cause harm to your patient. Because of improper technique or not setting the regulator properly, let's understand what hazards may occur if the clinician were to expose the patient to higher than recommended suction pressures. For instance, during a nasogastric suctioning procedure, notice in the video that mucosal tissue may enter one of the eyelets and damage may occur, including bleeding, perforation or ulceration of the esophagus and stomach. Similarly, higher than recommended suction pressures during an endotracheal suction procedure can also cause complications. Notice that when the catheter descends into the trachea, it may attach to the wall of the airway. If this happens and the suction pressure is set too high, tissue damage may occur as demonstrated in this animation. Once the mucosal tissue is damaged, bleeding may occur, which may increase the patient's risk of infection. Other damage can occur from too high of pressure such as hypoxia and atelectasis that can contribute to acute lung injury and inflammation. Now that you know the potential hazards resulting from improper technique or incorrect settings of the regulator, let's learn ways to avoid these complications by starting with the proper setup of the vacuum system. We will now demonstrate the proper setup using an analog gauge push to set vacuum regulator, an overflow safety trap and suction canister. The setup process will not vary for a digital gauge push to set regulator. Starting at the regulator, the National Fire Protection Association recommends an overflow safety trap as an insurance device to protect the regulator, wall outlet, and pipeline system from being contaminated. The trap is connected directly to the regulator. The recommended 18 inch in length by 1 quarter inch diameter tubing is connected from the trap to the top of the suction canister vacuum port. Also, the proximal patient tubing, recommended at 72 inch in length by 1 quarter inch diameter, is connected to the top of the suction canister patient port. Take care that the patient tubing is midline to the patient and does not loop below. The overflow safety trap acts as a redundant safety feature if the automatic shutoff valve in the suction canister should fail. Fluid will flow to the trap and the missile-like structure inside the trap will rise and shut off the vacuum from the regulator. Please follow hospital protocol for cleaning of the trap. The patient tubing is never connected directly to the vacuum regulator. If an overflow safety trap is not used at your facility, the tubing is connected from the regulator to the canister. And the proximal patient tubing is connected to the top of the suction canister. Again, the patient tubing is never connected directly to the vacuum regulator as potential infectious material could enter the regulator, wall outlet, and pipeline system. Clinicians should inspect for damaged or broken regulators before use to avoid potential patient harm. First, inspect the regulator. As shown in the video, if the unit has broken parts or the housing is damaged, 
or while in the off position the gauge shows a value other than zero, the unit should be replaced as per your hospital's protocols. In contrast, a properly working unit while in the off position, the gauge will read zero, and when turned on, during pressure adjustments the analog gauge should move freely forward and backwards. If your facility has purchased a digital push to set gauge, it should read zero in the off position, and values should increase and decrease freely in the on position while adjusting pressure. Furthermore, inspect that when the unit is placed in the intermittent mode, that the regulator cycles on and off. Lastly, we will demonstrate how you will operate your Ohio Medical Push to Set Vacuum Regulator. First, let's review the parts of the Push to Set Regulator. The vacuum gauge will be either analog or digital depending on the model your institution purchased. Here is the mode selector switch, and here is the suction control knob. Second, in the off position, no suction is being applied to the patient. Third. Turn the mode selector switch to the eye or continuous position for an endotracheal suction procedure. Push and rotate the suction control knob until the vacuum gauge indicates the required setting. And release the knob. It is normal to see pressure drop on the gauge after releasing the knob as the system is open. By setting the pressure to a specific millimeters of mercury, you have now set the maximum pressure. You do not need to reset the pressure you have already effectively set the maximum pressure from previous steps. Take caution not to over-rotate the knob. Once you feel resistance while pushing and turning the knob, this indicates the device is at maximum pressure. Forcefully turning the knob will damage the regulator. In an emergent situation where clearing the airway quickly is critical, the PTS adult regulator requires only two full turns from zero to reach maximum vacuum pressure. Fourth, if the unit also has intermittent capabilities, you may turn the mode selector switch to the IO-IO or the intermittent position for a nasogastric suction procedure. The unit starts the intermittent cycle in the on position so that suction is being applied. Push the suction control knob. The pressure that was set in I or continuous mode will register the same in the IO-IO or intermittent mode. If you require a different maximum pressure, move the selector switch back to continuous mode, follow the already covered procedure to set pressure, and move the selector switch to the intermittent mode. The PTS regulator should cycle both on and off in the intermittent mode position. If you'll be operating the pediatric push to set model, it limits the maximum pressure to 130 millimeters of mercury with a backup safety feature limiter of 140 millimeters of mercury plus or minus five millimeters of mercury. Similarly, if you are operating the neonate unit, it limits the maximum pressure to 100 millimeters of mercury with a backup safety limiter of 110 millimeters of mercury 
plus or minus 5 millimeters of mercury. If either backup safety limits are reached, the unit will vibrate. This is normal. Using the mode selector switch, simply dial the pressure back down and reset the pressure as previously instructed. This concludes the operational steps for the push to set vacuum regulator. We at Ohio Medical Corporation would like to thank you for using our push to set vacuum regulators. We hope this video helps to clarify proper vacuum setup, identify properly functioning regulators, and how to properly operate and set your regulator for differing procedures. If you should have further questions about the push to set vacuum regulator line, please reference the owner's manual or contact Ohio Medical Corporation at 1-866-549-6446.